Tla under the theme equipping learners with knowledge and skills for a changing world. The Lhotla was the sixth of the annual event. Uh, it's also involved a number of international education stakeholders to share ideas on how to adapt with the changing times. Let's discuss this further and bring in education analyst and dean of education at the University of Johannesburg, Professor Sarah Gravitt. Uh, Professor, thank you very much indeed for your time. You're welcome. I hope I got the surname right. Yeah, you did, indeed. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for taking the opportunity. All right, let's listen. Let's look at this, this theme. Uh, equipping learners with knowledge and skills for a changing world. It's a loaded theme. It is a big task, mm -hmm. but it is possible. Mm -hmm. What needs to be in place? Mm -hmm. What is currently happening? What needs to change in order to achieve this goal? Well, the minister has indicated before, and it was again uh, a focus of the Lakotla, that we need to rethink, reimagine, and I think that th uh, the third uh, word that she used was reconfigure the education system. But more specifically then, uh, the way probably to start is to look at the curriculum. And uh, Mr. Mocheka also said that we are going to move to a com competency-based curriculum. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, if it means that we will be infusing in the current curriculum the, the competencies, the skills, the knowledge that we need for a changing world more than we did before, I, I think this is extremely important. Mm. What this probably would mean is then uh, looking very carefully at the current curriculum and to see which are the core ideas, the core concepts that must be retained uh, in the current curriculum, what maybe needs to be replaced uh, in the current curriculum. What many of us have been saying for many years is that curriculum is too full, full of information. Mm. Please note that they say it's, it's, not, uh, it's too full of knowledge, but too full of information. So the first thing that, of course, needs to be done is uh, the curriculum. Second, oh, well, we will have professor, to what, what, the way that we teach. Let's just, let's just take it a, a yes, step sure. back. Uh, that's very interesting sure. to know. Uh, that, the aspect of it being too full. What do you mean by that in terms of the information? Is the workload too much for the various grades? Uh, just break that down for us. Mm -hmm. um, the curriculum should be focusing on ensuring that learners understand the core concepts and the core ideas that they would need either for um, the foundation for the future what they, the basic knowledge that they need to be successful in schooling in the future, but also worthy of, and here I would like to quote an uh, academic from uh, Harvard, uh, Professor Perkins, and I really like his work very much. He, he talks about life-worthy curriculum. Mm. Now, at the moment, uh, the curriculum is full of stuff that needs to be done by certain times. And our teachers tell us that they often know that the kids have not really grasped the core, but because the curriculum is so full, they must move on. And this is not serving us well. Rather have a leaner and meaner curriculum. In other words, a curriculum that enable us to delve deeply, to understand the core ideas very well. But this also requires that the teaching needs to be adapted to enable that. And the type of teaching that is needed to enable this deep type of learning that we're talking about is not quickly running through stuff. Yeah. It is allowing conversation. It's allowing delving deeper, as I said, and it is allowing uh, purposefully infusing the, the skills for a changing world yeah. in the curriculum firstly but secondly particularly also how we teach the curriculum All right so we we know where we need to get to what's the first step in getting there i understand that there is a process already in place to uh, start looking at the curriculum and uh, to prepare a curriculum then that is more uh, future focused yeah 
to enable that our children are future ready. And as, and as far as that is possible, of course. Uh, the, the future is changing so rapidly, I don't think we will ever have a curriculum that enables us to, to prepare children fully for, for the world. So the first step is the curriculum. That secondly also is then that we need to look at pedagogy. Uh, now, this was mentioned uh, also by the minister, and we've learned here, uh, we've learned from COVID-19, we've learned that the, probably the best way forward in terms of teaching and learning in the future is a blended approach, right. uh, capitalizing on the ICTs, but also understanding the important role that the teacher plays as a guide, as a supporter in, in, in uh, uh, the knowledge that that we want our uh, children to learn. Right. So it is capitalizing on the strength of teachers and capitalizing on the strength of ICTs. Because we can it no longer, be because we can no longer look at online learning and in-person classes in silos, isn't it? They can be Absolutely. used to, to complement each other. Mm. Absolutely, and that's the important point that we need to make, that it's first and foremost about the learning of the children. Mm. So we need to understand how can I use ICTs, the, the affordances from the, of the ICTs to support the learning of the children. What is the teacher in all of that? So take the best of, of the ICTs, take the best of what contact teaching provides us and bring the two together in a blended mode. That's probably the best way forward. Mm. Of course, it requires teachers to know how to do it. They have, they need to know, to have the know-how. Yeah. So a lot of teacher development will have to take place. And also the ICT roll out to schools. Correct. We access. Have not been, yeah, exactly. Data access, because one would assume if you have a blended approach in the school, there would also be a sense that children must also have access to data beyond the school. Now, that, this, of course, is not going to happen immediately, yeah. but data is expensive in, in this country. And secondly, also, um, access uh, is, is not that freely available, in, particularly in rural areas. Yeah. Something that the minister also mentioned as she wrapped up the Lukhutla, uh, is psychosocial support. Dealing with COVID-19 mm -hmm. on one hand, all the changes that uh, the learners are going through, that's, that's critical in the schooling system, isn't it? It's absolutely critical in the schooling system. It is critical that teachers should have psychosocial support and the children. And this is again, uh, you know, I often hear people saying the future of education is online. Uh, and I, I strongly disagree with that. Uh, there are some children who can thrive in any circumstances and who probably thrive with online uh, teaching and learning, but they are the minority. Uh, the children need the support of their peers. They need the support of the teacher and particularly our younger children. So psychosocial support at all levels, crucially important. Extremely important insight, Professor. We thank you very much indeed for your time. Good health to you and your family. Be well. Thank you very much. All, all right. the best. That, that was uh, Professor Sarah Gravett, uh, the an education and lesson dean of education at the university of johannesburg let's take a quick break and get you more news next